Hey y'all, we're having a blessed day. It's so good to see you. Today is Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. And what a blessing it was at church to see two beautiful baby girls dedicated to the Lord by the pastor and to have this be a wonderful day when we could just think about the precious gift of life. Not only the baby's lives, but in general, all of our lives, because truly life is a precious gift given to us by God. And I thank him every day for the gift of life, because even when we got out of bed this morning, that was a gift from the Lord, that we woke up this morning to live another day for his glory. And what a tremendous, wonderful gift it is that God has given us. And I thank him every day for that gift. But sadly, many people in the world today, they don't realize the precious nature of life. They don't realize the sacred holy nature of this wonderful thing called life that God has given us because we are all created in the image of God and God even knew us before we were born and it just saddens my heart to think of all of the um, people who don't really cherish life and even these um, abortions that are going on millions of babies being killed and it just it just truly is so sad to think about these precious children who are just being killed before they're even born because the Bible says that we were known before we were even con uh, out of the womb. The Bible says that the Lord knew us in the womb. In Jeremiah 1, 5, he, the Lord says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. So God is saying that he knew all of us before we were even born. When we were still in our mother's womb, God knew us. From the time that we're conceived, God knows us. Even before we're conceived, God knows that we're going to be conceived and we're going to hopefully be born in this world and live for his glory. But life is a precious thing that we can never take for granted. We can never just throw it away or cast a child or an adult or anyone aside. We've got to realize that life is truly, truly a treasured, priceless gift. And we need to never take that for granted. And the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, it talks about what we should do for our children. Now, if you don't have children, I don't have children of my own yet either. Maybe one day I will, Lord willing. But children are a precious gift. And even if you don't have children, there are children in your life that you see either at church or at work or in your neighborhood, maybe in your family, extended family of nephews, nieces, grandchildren. But those children that you come in contact with, you can encourage them and help guide them in the Lord. And if you're a parent or grandparent, you have a direct connection to children that you can guide and lead according to God's word. In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. We've got to make sure that we direct our children that we come in contact with on the right path. As a school teacher teaching 8th grade middle school, I can tell you that a lot of children are led astray. They're not going down the right path. Other people and other, um, even some of their friends, they'll be led astray and they just don't do the right thing sometimes. And we've got to make sure as Christians that we take every opportunity we have to help guide them on the right path according to the word of God. And even if you can't directly, you know, witness to them or read the Bible to them as I can to the public school teacher, but even if you can't do that, you can pray for them. You can pray that God will lead them and guide them and direct them onto the right path. And if you're able to witness to them, even more the better. Because if we can just share the scriptures with them, tell them that Jesus loves them. Many kids don't know that they're loved because they don't get that love at home. And we need to provide that love of the Lord to them any chance we get so we can help direct them on the right path. Because as it says here, when they're older, they won't depart from it. Because if a child's trained up in the right way, according to the Lord, according to the Bible, they will not go astray. And that's my prayer for all the children, that they will just be led and follow the Lord in everything they do. But there's one more thing we have to do because we can't just stop there. You can't just read some scriptures or pray for somebody and leave it at that. Because we have a bigger job to do. The Bible says in Mark 16, 15 that we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. That should be our main goal in life. That should be what we really eat, sleep, and breathe is just sharing the gospel, telling people that there is hope in Jesus Christ, telling others that Jesus Christ is Lord and he saves and he's our Savior and our Lord and he loves us more than we could ever possibly imagine. That's the greatest message we could ever share with anybody. And we need to make that our primary goal in life because God's given us this gift of life, but he didn't just give us this gift of life so we could sit on the sofa and watch television or so we could just go to work and come home, eat dinner, take a shower and go to work again the next day. God gave us his gift of life so we could share the gospel, so we could serve him. The Bible says we were created for his pleasure. We were created to worship him. 
in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2 it says this it says that we should um, I'm sorry verse 1 and so dear brothers and sisters I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you let them be a living and holy sacrifice the kind he will find acceptable this is truly the way to worship him that's how we should be living our lives as a living sacrifice for the Lord now the preacher this morning talked about Abraham and Isaac and how Abraham took his wonderful only son whom he loved onto the altar and he was probably 15 and 20 years old and he put his son Isaac up on the altar to offer his son as a sacrifice now back in the Old Testament times they'd offer sacrifices to the Lord and so he put his son on the altar there to sacrifice him and the Lord honored his faith and his loyalty to the Lord and the Lord the angel of the Lord came down and said don't lay a hand on the boy because you've done what you're supposed to do you've listened to the Lord you have followed his leading you've done and you obey the Lord and you don't have to sacrifice your son and there was a ram caught in the thickets and so Isaac's life was saved but can you imagine being Abraham holding that knife about to sacrifice your only son you love and just to take his life because the Lord told you to we need to have that kind of obedience and that kind of trust that the Lord will lead us and guide us every day because if we do that the Lord told Abraham that he would bless him and multiply him and the Lord did just that and we need to have that kind of faith like Abraham and that kind of trust that whatever we do in our life that we're following the Lord's footsteps everywhere we go and looking to him we can't look at other people because people will disappoint us and let us down there are people that we're going to encounter in life and they're going to just sometimes really annoy us they're going to aggravate us they're going to discourage us but Jesus Christ will never fail us he's the friend who's closer than a brother and we need to live our life for Jesus not for other people not for organizations not for any other thing on this earth except for Jesus Christ alone and the Bible says here in verse 2 in the book of Romans chapter 12 it says don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect we've been given this wonderful gift of life because God wants us to worship him God wants us to live our lives for him so we can be a shining example of his love and mercy and grace to everyone we meet because we should be able to just walk into a room and someone look at us and see something different about us they should see a glow about us the glow and the joy of the Lord all around about us and we should be a positive people who just constantly talk about the Lord and encourage others through the scriptures and through testimony of what God has done in our lives I know myself I just thank the Lord every day for the gift of life when I was born I was born lifeless I've shared this story before but I'm going to share it again because I was born lifeless and my parents prayed Jesus help the doctors had set me aside and said there's nothing they could do I had no heartbeat but my parents prayed Jesus help they soon heard what sounded like a little kitten begin to cough and I was alive and because of the wonderful healing power of Jesus Christ that's why I'm alive today and I thank him every day for the gift of life he's healed me and saved me and rescued me so many times since and I would not be here today if it wasn't for Jesus Christ and I give him all the glory honor and praise and I thank him every moment of my life for the gift of life because life is truly the greatest treasure we could ever find because money you can't take it to heaven stuff you can't take it to heaven a nice home a nice car a nice family you can't take it to heaven except for the family part because if your family knows Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior then they too will be called home one day to be with Jesus in heaven forevermore you see that's the most important thing we could give our family that's the most important way we could spend our lives is to share the gospel because all these other things will one day pass away everything that's earth is going to pass away but the Word of God stands forever and the Bible says that if we call on Jesus Christ we will be saved and it says that today is a day of salvation not tomorrow not next week not next year because then it might be too late Jesus Christ could return this very moment and if he does I'm ready and I'm waiting and I'm so excited about that glorious day but it saddens my heart to know that so many people are lost without the saving grace of Jesus Christ our Lord because Romans 3 23 says that we've all sinned we've all fallen short of the glory of God so if you're not sure if you're right with God maybe you're just you've been to church a couple of times or maybe you used to go to church and you don't go anymore maybe you haven't read the Bible in a while or maybe you've never even picked one up 
Whatever case it is for you, I want to encourage you to call on Jesus Christ today. Because we have no guarantee of tomorrow. Life is a wonderful, precious gift, but we don't know when our life on this earth will end. And when our life ends, the moment to accept Jesus Christ, that opportunity is over. So now is the time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. He loves you so much that he gave his life for you on Calvary. He died for you on a cross for the forgiveness of your sins because God knew that it would take a perfect sacrifice to cleanse our horrible sins that all of us have on us until we come under the blood of Jesus Christ and have our sins washed away white as snow. And because of this precious gift that God has given us, we can receive eternal life in heaven with Jesus Christ our Lord. If we just accept the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord, if we believe that he is Lord, and we confess our sins, then we can receive this wonderful gift of salvation. We can receive this wonderful gift of eternal life in heaven. Because while life is a precious gift, and the opportunity to share the gospel on this earth is a wonderful, priceless treasure, the greatest gift of is, is eternal life in heaven and this wonderful gift of salvation that's freely given to all who believe. So accept Jesus Christ today. And if you've already accepted Jesus Christ, I encourage you to tell others about your testimony. Tell them what the God has done for you. You don't have to be a pastor, preacher, evangelist, or missionary, or anything other title that there might be. You just have to have a willingness to share the gospel, to tell someone what the Bible says, to share your testimony, what God's done in your life, and to encourage them through what Jesus Christ has done for you. I can tell you when I share my testimony, it's just amazing to see sometimes the way it really touches people's hearts. It's nothing I've done, but it's all because of Jesus Christ, and I thank him every day. And I pray that every day I can help have an impact on other people in a positive way and encourage them to call on Jesus Christ because it's not just about being encouraged or having some joy for the moment, but we're talking about encouragement in the Lord where we can have joy even in the midst of sorrow, when we can have peace that passes all understanding, when we can call on Jesus Christ, when we can lean on him when times are difficult. That's the kind of encouragement we need to give others, that there is hope beyond this life. There's hope in Jesus Christ for all eternity. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way to find eternal hope is through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Going to church can't save you. Having money can't save you. Knowing somebody that knows somebody who's a saved can't save you. It doesn't work that way. It's a decision you have to make yourself. It's a decision we have to make ourselves on a personal level, and then it's something we have to share with other people, whether it be our children, grandchildren, our parents, grandparents, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, other family, co-workers, neighbors, even the clerk at the grocery store or the waiter or waitress at the restaurant. Every person we come in contact with has one thing in common, and that's that they've been given this precious gift of life and that they are lost without Jesus Christ. So I urge you today to tell someone about Jesus Christ. Tell them that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Offer your body, that says here Romans 12, as a living sacrifice, a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that the Lord will find acceptable. That's the way we can truly have true worship. And we need to worship Jesus Christ in everything we do because he alone deserves all of our glory, honor, and praise. He's the only one we should worship. He's the only one we should adore. And he's the only one who can truly save our souls and give us joy unspeakable and full of glory and give us hope forevermore. So call on him today and make sure that you take this opportunity to tell someone about Jesus Christ. Tell them that there is hope. Offer yourself, offer your life to God because he's given us all for us. So let's give our lives for him. I invite you to go to cwrmusic.org for more Be Encouraged videos and for songs my dad and I have written. You can download the free and free three files and other things there we pray will be a blessing to you. I also invite you to go to jennifercampbell.net forward slash sunshine where you can download a free chapter of my brand new book. It's an inspirational autobiography titled There's Sunshine Awaiting You. I pray these things will be a blessing to you and those you share them with. Remember this week that there is hope in Jesus Christ. So let's offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, telling others about Jesus Christ and his amazing love and sharing the gospel to everyone we meet because truly there's no greater message we could ever share. And remember one more thing, that Jesus Christ loves you more than you could ever possibly imagine.